So it's come to my attention that my children's book illustration process video got 28,000 views. I didn't know that because uh, most of my videos get like 100 <laughs> or 1,000. And so I wasn't really paying attention. Um, so thank you guys. <laughs> so much i will pay more attention um i had responded to some comments like a few months ago but like it took off in the middle of nothing uh, <laughs> and so there's like a, a ton and ton of comments and questions and so what i thought i would do is i'm gonna go through the comments on that video and i have to do this in two parts because there's so many today's video it will be frequently asked questions about illustration in general and then i'll do a technical questions day as well before I start, I just want to say there are so many just like incredibly kind comments in there about um, like my art and my art style or my what I'm doing to help you guys. And it means the world to me that I'm able to help you guys. Um, I definitely felt like when I was on my journey to become an artist that I wanted more help. <laughs> from someone that had done it and felt kind of lost and confused. So uh, it brings me great pleasure to be able to do that. And so um, thank you, it really, really means a lot to me. I have read every single one of them. Okay, all right, so getting started. Uh, the first question was about how I developed my art style. And I think I could do an entire video just on that. So let me know if you guys are interested, but I'll give a sort of short answer here. Um, so when I was originally like a beginner artist, you don't really have a style at that time, or it doesn't honestly matter if you have a style. <laughs> a style at that time, really the foundation, like when you're learning to draw and paint, you're going to be copying. You're going to be looking at other people that have come before you and drawing in a similar style. And if you think about like the great masters of like Renaissance painters, they copied each other they're, they're they had like an apprentice they, and so they copied their master and that's how they learned and that's totally okay to not have a style in the beginning but i would encourage you to pay attention to the things that you find yourself gravitating towards and the hardest part about this is the things that you like will seem boring <laughs> to you because they seem completely normal they're like not interesting. They're just the things that you like. So for example, for me, my style is cute. If somebody were to ask me what I like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think cute is an interesting thing to say, but I've developed my entire career around cute illustration and my book, How to Draw Adorable, around cute drawing, <laughs> right? But it's so internal within me that I, I might not have even mentioned it because it doesn't seem special. Um, so try and pay attention to those things. Those like core things about you that you you enjoy doing and drawing. And then later, after you've got sort of more of your fundamentals uh, and even paying attention to what you like to draw and uh, that sort of thing, then I think you can start looking at creating more of a style. And the way that I do that is, I personally really love Pinterest for this, but you can do it on Instagram, but go through and collect images and reference and inspiration and it really helps if you've already decided like the field that you want to go into like would you like to go into game art which is what i did originally that style is very different than when i wanted to go into children's illustration so try and just pick something a path you can change your mind later but to start you're going to pick a path you're going to pick art that all kind of falls in that world <laughs> and define your style from there and then pick like um i think i learned this from lee white uh where he calls it like a uh like a it's basically your the portfolio that you wished you had your, your dream portfolio and you put like 10 pieces in there and you can only have 10 pieces and they all have to be stuff that you actually want to do like i don't like doing landscapes and I don't like drawing realistically. I can do those things. I don't like doing those things. I'm not gonna put that in my dream portfolio, right? All stuff that's actually stuff that you like. You're gonna make a dream portfolio. You're gonna put one of your art pieces in there and you're gonna see where your art piece is missing. <laughs> so then you know what to develop, but then you're gonna like pick and choose from those pieces. Like I really love that 
way that they're doing lighting. I love the way that they draw noses. I like their gesture. And you're gonna start using that to develop your own style um, after looking at those things and sort of incorporating little bits and pieces. And it is important that portfolio is not like one person because <laughs> then you're just gonna be a copycat of somebody else. But you can use it to like, I like those noses and I like the way that they did backgrounds and I like their lines and the way that they draw lines and just kind of combine them all together and use that to help create your style. And as a little plug for my book, I do have a page in there or actually a chapter about style and developing a style. And I have like, for example, a page, I'll just show you where all I do is show you like eye styles or no styles or mouths. And that way you can try and practice different ways of drawing and see if you can put it in your characters. Do they work for you or not? Um, so it's here's some examples of different like eye styles that you can try and use that to sort of as a base and then you can try and make your own style out of that but I feel like you need somewhere to start before you do that so hopefully that's helpful it's kind of like the quick rundown of style um but yeah that's basically what I did I ended up having to recreate my style multiple times through my career like in the beginning I was like a style chameleon and I just did whatever the brand was that I was working for and then when I needed to become a, wanted to become a children's illustrator, I had to redo my style and I ended up doing it twice. Like it's, every year I made a new style. And this is a journey. It is not a destination. You will always be developing your style. <laughs> um, but that's essentially, you know, what I did. Okay, so the next question is, I'm a complete beginner and I was wondering what program you would recommend as most user-friendly to start with digital illustration. I answered this for you, but I'm gonna let everybody know. I recommend Procreate. Um, it's fairly cheap and you can get a refurbished iPad. Um, and it has, like the way it's set up, it's very similar to Photoshop, but without all of the stuff that you don't need. And even my daughter who's, um, under the age of 10 can grab my tablet and draw on it. And so it's very accessible in that way, like user-friendly. There's obviously the purchase cost of the iPad itself, which is why I recommend just get every first one if you're not sure about it. And you do need to get an Apple Pencil, which is actually the most expensive part, but Procreate's not very expensive. I think it's maybe like five or $15. Next question, how long does it usually take you to do one page from sketch to final product? So this, wildly changes depending on how detailed the illustration is. Like I have um, the drawings that I showed in that last video didn't have a lot of lighting. And so I think those maybe took a full, maybe like two to three hours for those illustrations. But then one of the pages had like the background of the, <laughs> the toy shop. And that one I'm not as comfortable with backgrounds. And so that one took more like five to six hours. However, with uh, the book that I'm working on right now with Yeti, there's pages that have lighting. And so those pages might take more like eight to 10 hours. And I would say that those amount of times are probably, not to toot my own horn, uh, much faster than most illustrators because of my background in animation and with game art and working with brands where I, they were like, we need a children's book done, you have two weeks. And I was like, okay. So um, I'm probably a bit faster than most illustrators. That's not a normal. And I definitely recommend in general as an artist, do not compare yourself to others. You can look at others for inspiration and for where you would like to go, but you are on your own journey and you might be not as fast as somebody else, but you might have more detail or um, at that point where they were, when they were at where you are, they were also the same speed. So try not to like, to judge yourself for that if that's something that you're worried about. Um, <laughs> probably do a whole video on like how to not compare yourself to other artists. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, I want to know how you really know or feel satisfied about the level of complexity of objects or visual elements on each scene. For me, this question is really like, almost like, how do you know when you're done? <laughs> so you're doing an illustration, how do you know if you like everything's done and you have enough detail? So I would say, for me personally, I have two answers to this. The first one is, I'm done when I feel like it. I truly believe if you're working past burnout, it, it, the quality drops. Oh no. 
<laughs> so if I am working and I'm like, you know what, I'm burnt out now, I'll just stop. I might come back later, but I'm like, for now I'm done. Um, and if it's for a professional piece, I might be like, I'm done for today. I'll come back tomorrow or like I'm done for this week and I'm going to do all of the other things I need to do and come back here. So like, I do really pay attention to that. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm just, we're done. <laughs> um, but especially if it is like a professional piece and let's say I'm on a deadline and it's due tomorrow and I know that it's not high enough quality yet for what they need and I'm burnt out, <laughs> this is what I will do. So the second answer is um, I try, I had a teacher one time who was like looking at giving a girl a critique and what he mentioned was like every single thing in the illustration, whether or not it was the background or the person had the same level of care in it. And I, I thought that was a really interesting way to think about it. Cause like a lot of times guilty as charged, like the character will have the most detail and like carefully drawn and whatever. And then the background's like, ah. and it's okay for the background to be like, more messy or loose or whatever but i at least go through and like finesse it and like clean up the lines a little bit um and then at the end i always add additional details for texture so like patterns on a shirt or um like little grass marks or stuff like that because i have noticed personally in my art like when i did that style challenge where i put my art next to other people's art that's what my art was missing. So I have to force myself to do it at the end and like fill up the scene a little bit so that it feels complete. But I do basically sort of compare my art to like that standard that I've sort of made up and see if it fits to that. Um, but honestly, just trying to make sure that it feels cohesive. So like not one area is super finished compared to the rest. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the next question is what made you decide to publish as a book instead of a main digital product like a webtoon or maybe a visual novel. So the illustration I was doing in that um, YouTube video was actually for a client. So it was up to them and it was a gift to their family members. So I, it wasn't really up to me. However, for my book, How to Draw Adorable, I uh, wanted a physical product because I wanted people to be able to draw on the book and to practice and do the workbook pages so it needed to be a physical book however i mean i do have ebooks and i sort of tend to test ideas through ebooks and digital products and then once i know that it's worth the price of printing <laughs> then i'll work on printing okay so another question is what technologies and programs do i use it's a little bit of a technical question but i work mainly with procreate photoshop and indesign you do not need to use InDesign. If you're a children's illustrator, you don't need that. However, uh, I was working in a work environment for um, many years where it was a really, really tight timeline. And so there was a lot of back and forth of like, I would turn in my illustrations and then I would get the graphic design and then I have to change the illustrations to fit the text. And like, there was a, so much back and forth and then like the story would change. And so I ended up teaching myself InDesign <laughs> so that I could lay out the text as it changed to make sure there was room for it and that it made sense, especially because there was a lot of like spot illustrations where it's like a little single illustration on the page that would have text go with it. So it'd be like, he jumped and then he fell. And so I would want to make sure that it would fit on the page and would flow. So it became part of my process to lay out the text and the illustrations, like my sketches together. And I would just do it in InDesign because it's easier than in Photoshop, but you don't have to. I understand that's my process, but not everyone can afford a design or want to learn it. <laughs> um, so if I didn't, and I still wanted to lay out the text, you can do it in Procreate. It's just really clunky, like adding text. So I would still do that probably in Photoshop. And I would use the feature on Photoshop that allows you to create artboards. And I would do it that way. <laughs> Is there an inexpensive way to get started until I make money? Um, yeah, uh, sketchbooks. <laughs> <laughs> work traditionally um I honestly uh <laughs> try and find a like used if you're wanting to work digitally find something used find a used like iPad or something um I know sometimes you can find deals on like Facebook marketplace of people that are getting rid of things that they decided not to use um but I mean, there's always a place for traditional art. It just could take more time, but it, the children's illustration world is probably one of the few places that actually is uh, welcoming of that. 
So the other question that I've gotten a lot over on Instagram is um, how do you get an agent? So in this video, I was illustrating for like a self-published author, but if you do traditional publishing, so like Penguin Random House or, or Scholastic, you need to have an agent to do that. And the way just, again, we could probably do a whole video on this, but the way that you go about getting an agent is you first, and even to get self-published art, you need a portfolio. The most important thing that you can have as an artist is a portfolio. That is more important than any degree. <laughs> and I say that as someone who went to college for art school, um, but as someone who reviewed portfolios and helped hire people during my career, um, I would always portfolio first and then resume second. So if you don't have the skills in your portfolio, you're not getting hired. So portfolios are the most important thing that you can possibly have. You need to have at least 10 to 15 like high quality images that shows what you can do. Um, if you're in children's illustration, then you're gonna wanna be able to show that you can tell a story. So not just like flat images of things, like show some storytelling, so some emotion occurring, have two characters interacting, uh, try to have um, different like skin tones and uh, ethnicities and ages and that sort of thing. But generally children's books is younger, so you definitely wanna make sure you have children in there. Um, if you can show different types of backgrounds or uh, times of day or weather or stuff like that so that there's some variety in your uh, portfolio. And then to get an agent, you would look on Google <laughs> or illustration agencies and you look at their submission guidelines and they are always very specific. Like we need a PDF or we need a website or we need like a like 12 JPEGs or whatever it is. Follow their guidelines precisely and submit to them that way. And then good luck that you get an agent. Be prepared to get rejections. Even if you're incredible, you'll get rejected. It's just life as an artist. <laughs> um, and I have, I know people who are like, every time they get a rejection, they're like, I made it one more step on the road to like getting it. So it's part of the process. I understand how hard it is. Um, but be okay with it. And then once you have an agent, then they can promote your work to publishers and then get you uh, traditional publishing work. So that's how you go through that process. Let me know if you guys want to know more about that. Okay, and then in the next video, it's more technical questions, so I need to do some overhead videoing. <laughs> so I'll do that there. Um, and I hope that was helpful. I just thanks again so much for all of the love and support. It means the world to me. Um, and I wish you guys all luck on your illustration journeys. Thank you.